Like many other first-generation folks, I have always wondered who I would be if I was raised in the same place as my ancestors. How much of me is a result of them? What have I inherited beyond just appearance? I will never know the answers to these questions, but I always feel a little more whole, a little more complete when doing rituals or practices that they might have done. Hello, my name is Hitomi Angela Prasa Mochizuki. Thank you so much for being here and joining me today. I am half Venezuelan and half Japanese, as a lot of you probably know. And today I wanted to do a deep dive into my background, which is more specifically Okinawan. Okinawa is a prefecture of Japan located on the Ryukyu Islands, which were home to the Ryukyu Kingdom until they were annexed by Japan in 1429 to protect their southern border. The Ryukyu Islands had a lot of influence from China and East Asia, a little bit of a different climate, making different crops more abundant and accessible, and they were pretty much doing their own thing before Japan came along. So there is a very big conversation around if Okinawans are technically Japanese, but I'm not gonna get into that today. They definitely have differences in dialect and language. So my dad is the Japanese one and my mom is the Venezuelan one and they both moved to the US and met in New York City and then had me. <laughs> and I was raised in a very Venezuelan, Hispanic upbringing. I learned Spanish as my first language. My first word was leche. And I pretty much learned Spanglish, I should say. I grew up eating pavillon, rice and beans, platanos. But I was so far removed from Japan and my Japanese background. I always kind of felt sad that my dad never taught me Japanese. A year and a half ago, I decided to start learning and taking the initiative to learn about my ethnic background myself. I also went to Japan two winters ago and met up with my cousins and my great aunt and I felt this really deep-rooted sense of belonging being in Japan, just the energy of it, the way people carry themselves, the humbleness. But today I wanted to take a Japanese language course, cook some Japanese dishes, and also maybe just learn a little bit about an area of Okinawan art just for fun and curiosity. I can only only learn more. I have so much to learn. That's pretty exciting. Today I'm going to take a Japanese level one class on Skillshare on my little iPad. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. They're a online learning platform with thousands of incredible high quality classes for curious and creative people looking to expand their trade or just learn something new have a little bit of a meditation through artistic practices and they have classes ranging from photography, sewing, video editing, entrepreneurial courses. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always uploading new premium courses so you can follow wherever your creativity and curiosity guide you. And the best part is that it's less than $10 a month with an annual membership. And I love that there is a community around the classes and you can communicate with the teachers and send in your projects. I have been using Skillshare for years and I'm the kind of person that has so many passions and interests so it's just really great. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my bio will get a free premium trial of Skillshare to explore and deepen into their creativity. If this interests you at all, please check it out. One of my favorite words in Japanese is yoroshiku onagaishimasu, which is something that you can say when you first meet someone and it basically means please be kind to me and I think that's the sweetest thing ever. Uh, I just finished taking three of those Japanese lessons, but I didn't want to bombard myself too much because I want to integrate it. And I skipped through the first lesson a little bit because I knew a little bit of the background. Another one of my favorite Japanese words is komorebi, which I actually have tattooed on my wrist. It means sunlight that shines through the leaves of trees, and there's no word for that in English, and I think that's so beautiful. Here is a quick outfit of the day because I'm about to change out of this outfit, but I'm wearing these green trousers from Topshop that I got secondhand. They're definitely kind of loose and baggy, but I like that. Uh, and I can pin them up and make them more high-waisted, but I kind of like it down. And then I'm wearing this secondhand top by the brand Zara, which is really sheer, and I just tucked it under my sports bra, and it looks really cute. And I like this combination together, but I'm gonna change into a dress because I think that'll be more fun for cooking in the kitchen. Wish I had my kimono. I have a traditional kimono that was passed down to me from my family, but it takes 
like three people to help me put that on and it's in New York so I don't have that right now um, but let's get to the kitchen and make some lunch I'm starting out with an Okinawan staple vegetable. These are purple sweet potatoes, also known as Japanese purple sweet potatoes or purple yams. These are made in savory and sweet dishes. And today I'm just making some mashed potatoes out of them. I boil them until they're fork tender and drain out the water, which is so beautiful. I would love to dye clothes with this water sometime, but then I just peel off the skin. I love to boil the potatoes as they are and peel the skin off after because it's just a lot easier than peeling it beforehand as they're pretty hard and then I just mash them all together and sprinkle some garlic salt on top you can season this any way add some vegan mayonnaise if you want but these are so yummy just like this and next I decided to make a miso soup with some soba noodles so I'm sauteing garlic and ginger and this is another really cool root vegetable from Japan called lotus root it has so many health benefits and I was trying to make them crispy but it kind of didn't work because I ended up adding broth and all the other soup ingredients but these make really good chips I love making miso soup with vegetable broth because it's so much more flavorful and of course you can add in any veggies that you like I'm just using what I have and I used a chickpea miso paste and then added sriracha liquid aminos scallions and I made the mistake of cooking the soba noodles directly in the soup when normally traditionally they're cooked separately so that the starches don't mix into the soup and make it thick um, but it still came out so delicious next I sauteed up my other favorite root vegetable this is burdock root it's really good for your liver it tastes amazing I seasoned it with rice vinegar a little sprinkle of coconut sugar and liquid aminos and a little bit of sriracha then I just added in these carrots I like chopping them up in this matchbox stick style and I love eating this on its own or in macro bowls it's 100% my favorite Japanese recipe or dish and lastly, I just made some brown sushi rice using rice vinegar, sugar, and I also added some roasted sesame seeds to this. Okay, I'm done cooking for today. And like I do in pretty much all of my cooking videos, I have been eating this the whole time I was cooking it, but I'm still really excited. So I'm gonna start off with the ramen. It's not really ramen, it's soba noodles. Itadakimasu! Mm. So, so yummy. Soba noodles are probably my favorite because they make my body feel really good after I eat them. <sighs> Almost forgot to take my deep breaths there. These are so good. Mm. So upon doing my research, I learned that Japan or Okinawa specifically has the largest population of centenarians in the whole world. Centenarians being people who are 100 years of age or older. And I was doing a lot of research to figure out why this was and of course it mainly comes down to diet and lifestyle. A lot of the elders there are still working day-to-day -day jobs up until their 80s and they eat primarily carbs in their diet and lower quantities of meat and oils, carbs and vegetables seem to be the main parts of their diet which I just feel like is so aligned with the way that I'm eating although I know in recent years there has been a lot more meat consumption. I think it kind of became a fad at one point even to try the Okinawan diet which is just very macrobiotic. And now I'm going to take a Tai Chi class. I know this doesn't originate in Japan or Okinawa for that matter but I have grown up watching my dad do these movements and have been so mesmerized by them but I actually got a download a few months ago when in a deep state of meditation to practice Tai Chi I really love the way that it feels to feel the energy pulsing within you feel yourself weaving through the electromagnetic waves that this existence is but most of people practice Tai Chi uh, will find it that not only they improve their energy based on how you feel. So now it's hands down, turn the palms up to loosen up the shoulders. We'll figure this out. <laughs> Make sure the internal organs so be flat on the ground. Comfortable. emotional right now but I just kept thinking about my dad 
and with each breath and with each movement I could visualize him doing that it was just like this weird montage of moments in every pose seeing my dad do that and seeing me watching him through different stages of my life and my dad was always working when I was younger but I would see him in the mornings before he went to work and eventually he moved fully into the city to work there and me and my siblings were upstate and we just didn't really get to know the guy and I feel like for a lot of my life I wanted a deeper connection with him. When I moved to New York City at 17 or 18 after I dropped out of college I was finally able to spend more time with him than I ever had before and it was like you've known me my whole life you've seen me grow but I'm just getting to know you and who you are and I feel like in many ways I'm still just getting to know my dad and I feel like this is a little ancestral things that come up I feel like I just want to show him so much love and me and my siblings all I think wanted that when we were younger we <laughs> would say a blessing to any Asian people that we saw because it just made us think of our dad so we would say a prayer like every night and please God bless all Asian people in the world I guess that doing this feels like a way that I'm connecting to him and to my lineage. I guess what I'm feeling is this overwhelming gratitude for all that my dad did for my family. I was his only biological daughter and my mom already had four kids and all of their dads left the country so they wouldn't have to pay child support and just weren't around. And my dad worked his ass off day and night, taking three hours, six hour commutes so that he could still see us for like two hours in the morning and just be home at night even though we would already be asleep. And part of me has this intense guilt that he did all of that for us and that he just went through so much struggle. And then the other part of me is just so overwhelmingly grateful for all he did and continues to do to help my mom out. I'm just really grateful. I feel like he's an angel and just so accepting and understanding and aware of what he was and wasn't able to give emotionally. And I just feel like he's a fucking warrior who has overcome so much. So we lived in a really small racist-ish it's racist. It was a racist town after we left the city because I grew up, I was born in the city and then we left and moved upstate. And my parents were both constantly racially profiled. My mom would get pulled over all the time because she looked very Hispanic and so policemen just always assumed she was undocumented. And my dad would get followed around and followed home and harassed and we got poop smeared on our car, on our van. And I just remember us calling the cops, letting him know that there's like these little forms of harassment happening. And I remember driving in the car with the poop all over it to get cleaning supplies to clean it off. And me and my siblings just sitting in the car and people walking by were like taking photos of the poop on the car and laughing and joking around and we, maybe they didn't know we were in the car but it felt like they were just laughing at us and our situation and just little things like that growing up that made me feel so, I don't know, like my family was wrong or that I was wrong and having these full circle moments of remembering that there was nothing ever wrong with me <laughs> or where I come from or my family. I literally feel like I'm having <laughs> a therapist talk right now but just I feel like my inner child is just like you are always safe, you are always worthy, you are always valid and being Asian is not something at all to be ashamed of. It's so beautiful and rich and exciting and healing to reconnect with um, different rituals and traditions. Yeah, I think that's why I feel so emotional. It's like my inner child is reliving these little events or in this grown body all these years later, finally like fully embracing all aspects of myself and where I come from. I am feeling better. That was a really good release. I journaled, I talked to my dad, and I'm gonna finish the night watching this little one hour informational conference about Okinawa 
It might not be the best quality, but I'm gonna have it linked down below. This was recorded at the Japan Society, which is an amazing place in New York. It's where I took my Japanese language course and they had tons of cool events. I hope that they're still doing okay. But yeah, I just thought this would be interesting. And I'm gonna end the day here. All day I've been feeling really grateful for how accessible it is to learn about our cultures and how the internet and living in the 21st century just makes me feel so much less alone in this little, you know, way that I'm reclaiming myself and doing this ancestral healing and confronting all those little just memories of confusion and discrimination growing up and I know that so many other people have faced similar things probably worse and my heart goes out to you and I hope that you can begin to find solace and healing in rediscovering and reclaiming your roots and your heritage and falling in love with who you are and where you come from and just yeah the long string of ancestors that have live to bring to bring you into this now moment i mean that's so cool to think about just so many generations of hard work and love and just miracles weaved into the fabric of time to bring us here into this very moment so thank you so much for being here with me right now um, once again the first 1000 people to click the link in my description box will get a free trial membership of skillshare premium if you want to check that out thank you to them for sponsoring today's video and i hope to see you in the video soon and that you can take some deep breaths into any areas of density and remember that sometimes letting go can be as easy as exhaling also sometimes therapy is really good <laughs> maybe try therapy if you're confronting something really intense within yourself that you don't feel like you have the tools to handle that is so valid and i'm a big advocate for that if you feel like you just need to take some deep breaths and implement some discipline and healing practices into your life then do that as well i'm really excited to keep on trying tai chi and finding a full class maybe a live class with a teacher and seeing how that progresses and helps me to evolve on this journey i know it's just going to be so healing but yeah this whole day was really healing and thank you for being a part of it i hope to see you in a video soon bye